So MSI has decided that they're no longer going to be making AMD Radeon 7000 series GPUs. Though at this stage, I'm not surprised it has come to this. The company has said they'll be focusing on Team Green's RTX GPUs, and it makes you wonder how the GPU landscape will look once the next generation rolls around. All that, and more to be discussed in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey what is going on guys, Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. There's a few topics I wanted to discuss for this video, but first I wanted to follow up on our previous discussion surrounding Intel's 14th and 13th gen CPUs having stability issues. If you're someone who owns a CPU from these generations, I definitely recommend checking that video out as it could save you a lot of time and a massive headache to avoid this issue or how to remedy it in case you do come across it. Now speaking of remedies, I discussed how ASUS had added an Intel baseline profile to their motherboards via a BIOS update. This profile was supposed to adhere more closely to Intel stock specifications and prevent stability issues with these CPUs, especially the i9 SKUs as they were just defaulting to obscenely high power limits, which is what was leading to a lot of stability issues for a lot of people in the first place. However, for the folks who applied this new baseline Intel profile, they reported that their performance had also dropped significantly, but the amount to which it had dropped varied from user to user. Again, with so many variables involved, this is to be expected as it can depend on on silicon quality, the model of the motherboard and its power delivery, along with the type of cooler the user is utilizing. Gigabyte has also followed ASUS's lead here and rolled out some BIOS updates for their Z790 motherboards, which adds the same Intel baseline profile, which is to help with users who are experiencing instability. A Chinese hardware site known as Unico's Hardware tested out the new profile, and while it does configure the right power limits, it does also raise the load line values much higher than they were on auto settings, which drastically raised the voltage. You can see from the their performance tests in Cinebench and in some games that the performance does take a significant hit. Honestly, you're better off just dialing in the power limits yourself manually and then fine tuning your load line values yourself as that's what I've done and found values which effectively allowed me to undervolt my CPU at the same time so I lowered power, lowered temps and I kept the same performance as stock. What Intel are doing here is essentially they're just lowering power limits while also raising the baseline voltage and that will stabilize the CPU in many of those scenarios where users reported crashing, but that will also drastically lower your peak boost frequencies and therefore it hurts performance as we just saw. It's a band-aid fix, you lower frequency and also push voltage. Yeah, your CPU is a force going to be stable, but this is just them brute forcing it. But for those that want a basic plug and play solution and can't be bothered to dial in anything themselves manually, I guess this is for them. I looked at Azrock's site and checked out some of their Z790 motherboards and their support pages. It doesn't look like they have added any BIOS updates which includes this new Intel profile and then I also checked out MSI's site along with some of their Z790 motherboards like the Z790 Carbon Wi-Fi as that's what I use on my test bench and there hasn't been any inclusion of a BIOS update pertaining to this new Intel baseline profile. Now if you have boards from these vendors and still want to go ahead and lower your power limits you can easily adjust the values themselves and as I mentioned you're better off dialing in your own manual undervolt. In any case this isn't even a main response from Intel we're still actually waiting on that so I'll be looking forward to what they say. I'm betting it'll just be a reaffirmation of them being stricter with their partners on power limits and then posting their power limits data sheet and telling users to adjust according to that. So basically whatever I and many others have been suggesting users to do from the start. Hey guys, editing Danny here. Just wanted to make this update as uh, I had recorded all of that audio before this update was pushed out. So this is on Video Card's website and I think they're sourcing Igor's labs here. And it uh, looks like Intel has come out with an update or a message and basically they're doing exactly what I said. They're blaming or pinning the blame on motherboard vendors and manufacturers who aren't following their guidelines. Essentially here what they're doing is they're listing out all the settings that you should be looking at in your BIOS that motherboard manufacturers are tweaking or disabling. So these are safeguards um, and yeah it's basically what we've all been talking about. These are the safeguards people have been uh, recommending you turn on or tweak, uh, adjusting values. And then over here they mentioned how Intel strongly recommends recommends customers default BIOS settings should ensure operation within Intel recommendation settings, recommended settings that is. So it's, uh, they're just recommending settings. They, sh I'm not sure if it's the wrong wording here, but they should, what they should be doing is actually telling motherboard manufacturers that this isn't a recommendation. This is actually a requirement. And then should the user want to go beyond that, there should be a big giant disclaimer saying that, look, you're on your own. Uh, this is venturing into overclocking territory. So if you do run into any stability issues, then this is at 
the user's fault. It's not actually within Intel spec. They also mentioned how Intel is continuing to actively investigate this issue to determine the root cause, and then that they will be publishing a statement in May of 2024. That's what the target is. So again, the full statement isn't out. They're still investigating it. Um, so again, we're just going to have to wait and see. Now, speaking of MSI, let's move on to our next topic. And this report comes from Hardware Lux and Hardware Unboxed. Hub posted a tweet stating that MSI has removed AMD's Radeon 7000 series GPUs from their product listings. And they also didn't make an AMD Radeon RX 7800 XT or an RX 7700 XT like other AIBs such as Gigabyte and ASUS. If we go over to MSI's website and take a look at their graphics cards and sort by AMD, we can still see the RX 7900 XT and 7900 XTX there, but on AMD's partner product page, they only show the RX 7600. Hardware Lux reached out to MSI and the response they got stated the following. Our focus is currently in the area of graphics types and the RTX maps. Nevertheless, working with AMD is essential and of utmost relevance to us, especially in the area of mainboards. We see a very positive development there. Now keep in mind, this is a translation since Hardware Lux is a German hardware site, but the messaging here is from MSI is clear. They're going to be primarily focusing on Nvidia's RTX graphics cards for now. This can still be subject to change of course, they haven't completely said that they're done making AMD cards going forward. At this stage though I'm not surprised by this at all because MSI wasn't really making various SKUs of AMD current gen GPUs anyways, especially when the RX 7000 series initially launched. If you recall they hadn't even released their versions of the RX 7900 XTX and the 7900 XT until a couple months later after everyone else, and when they did they utilized last gen coolers they had used on the RX 6000 series. So not really paying much attention to the series there, it doesn't really look like it was a prior priority for them. Then once the mid-range 7800 XT and 7700 XT were announced, they didn't even release any cards based on those GPUs. This is all speculation on my end, but I think the reason why MSI can't be bothered at this time to make AMD cards is because it's just not really profitable or feasible for them to do so. The sales numbers speak for themselves, and with the low margins that AMDs have on GPUs, they'd rather focus on selling cards for a brand that moves exponentially more volume. MSI has made 14 different versions of the RTX 4080. 14 of them. Whereas for the RX 7900 XTX, which is the 4080's direct competitor, they made just one. MSI aren't the only AIB to do this. Take a look at Gigabyte's page for example. They've got three versions of the RX 7900 XTX, whereas they have nine different RTX 4080's. One of the things that many people need to realize is that online social media, hardware forums, YouTube, and more can sometimes paint this picture that doesn't quite align with reality. Because if the amount of hype and post surrounding AMD was actually indicative of what went on in the market, then you'd see AMD's discrete GPU sector posting much higher earnings on their quarterly reports. But clearly that's not what happens, and AMD is only holding like 18% of the GPU market share, and that number would probably be even lower if we were to look at DIY alone. Nvidia outsells AMD like 10 to 1, that's just how it is, and I've been saying this for a long time but raster performance alone isn't enough to sell GPU hardware. When you take that into consideration, it's not surprising at all to see a board partner like MSI just focus on selling NVIDIA cards, and I wouldn't be shocked that in the future once they release RDNA 4, they might not even partake in making cards based on that architecture. There's been many rumors surrounding RDNA 4 which imply that AMD isn't going to be making a full stack of GPUs, and RDNA 4 will be similar to RDNA 1, there will be a mid-range option, and then a lower end entry level SKU. That's not to say that AMD can't do well next gen. They definitely can, especially if that mid-range card delivers great bang for the buck. Apparently Navi 48 could end up as fast as a 7900 XT or 7900 XTX, so if they deliver that level of performance below $500 with better ray tracing, better software features, AI, all of that good jazz, then they could have a winner on their hands, but I wouldn't get your hopes up too high just yet as there's still a lot of information we don't know about. But by late 2024, it'll be the two year mark since RDNA 3's launch, so as we get closer to the release, we'll see much more info and leaks. Circling back to MSI, I am hoping that in the future they start making more AMD cards again. It'll be a bit sad to see such a large AIB leave from the AMD space as that'll mean less competition going forward, and in this industry you want all the competition you can get. On my channel in the early days, a lot of the content I made was doing performance showcases of games coming out using my MSI R9390, that was an awesome card. I also had an MSI RX 480 I played around with for a while and that worked great as well. Moving on, and we have an article here from from video cards who are sourcing board channels, a hardware forum in China, so the information presented here would be more so relevant to the Asian market as opposed to North America or the global supply. They mention how many partners in the region had lower than expected supply for the RTX 40 series GPUs, especially the RTX 4060 Ti, 
and it's not enough to meet the level of demand that's going on there. We're not entirely sure as to what's caused this shortage in supply. It could be that they're prioritizing manufacturing for AI chips as opposed to general consumer product lines. I have also heard that there was a small little mining boom that happened in China which caused a spike in demand. Could Nvidia be gearing up to launch a new GPU, an RTX 4060 Ti Super? Who knows? But since most of the people who watch my videos are from the west side of the world, you really don't have much to be worried about as I was checking out supply at my local retailers as well as on Newegg and Amazon, and if you wanted to buy an RTX 4060 Ti or 4060, you can easily do so. The 4060 Ti has become one of the best selling GPUs on the market, which is somewhat impressive in its own right given how lackluster of a generational improvement it was over the RTX 3060 Ti, but the fact that it's outselling even an RX 7700 XT, which is now much cheaper than MSRP, and offers significantly better performance just backs up the point I was talking about earlier. Even when Nvidia has the weaker card and it's more expensive, it still outsells AMD. The folks over at Radeon are going to have to find some way to hack away at that large mindshare built up by Team Green, otherwise their next gen strategy to just appease the mainstream or mid-range market may not even work out for them either. Alrighty guys, so that's going to do it for this one, we'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.